in this lecture we are going to discuss four major topics first internationalization of financial markets and in this topic we are going to explain one international bond market euro bonds and euro currencies two world stock markets the second major topic is function of financial intermediaries in bike finance and in this topic we are going to explain one transaction costs two risk sharing three asymmetric information and we're going to explain what is meant by adverse selection and the moral hazard The third major topic is types of financial intermediaries, which are one, depository institutions, two, contractual savings institutions, three, investment intermediaries. And the fourth topic, major topic in this lecture, is regulation of the financial system. internationalization of financial markets we are going to explain international bond market euro bonds and euro currencies foreign bonds are sold in a foreign country and are denominated in that country's currency for example if the German automaker Porsche sells a bond in the United States, dominated in the, in the US dollars. It's classified as a foreign bond. A more recent innovation in the international bond market is the euro bond. A bond denominated in a currency other than that of a country in which it is sold. For example, a bond denominated in US dollars sold in London. Euro currencies, which are foreign currencies deposited in banks outside the home country. The most important of euro currencies are euro dollars, which are US dollars deposited in a foreign banks outside the United States or in a foreign branches of US banks. Euro currencies which are foreign currencies deposited in banks outside the home country. The most important of the currencies are euro dollars, which are US dollars deposited in foreign banks outside the United States or in a foreign branches of US banks. Two world stock markets. Until recently, the U.S. stock market was by far the largest in the world, but foreign stock markets have been growing in importance, with the United States not always number one. Investors now pay attention not only to the Dow Jones Industrial Average United States, but also to stock price indexes for foreign stock markets such as Nikkei 300 average in Tokyo and the Financial Times Stock Exchange 100 share index in London. Foreign stock market indexes. The most important of these stock market indexes are first Dow Jones Industrial Average an index of the 30 largest publicly traded corporations in the United States and maintained by the Dow Jones Corporation. Second, Standard and Poor's 500, an index of 500 of the largest companies traded in the United States and maintained by Standard and Poor's. Third, Nasdaq Composite an index for all the stocks that trade on the Nasdaq stock market, 
where most of the technology stocks in the United States are traded. Fourth, FTSE 100, an index of the 100 most highly capitalized UK companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. Fifth, DAX, an index of the 30 largest German companies trading on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. CAC 40, an index of the largest 40 French companies traded on their next Paris. Seventh, Hang Seng, an index of the largest companies traded on the Hong Kong stock markets. Eighth, Straight Times, an index of the largest 30 companies traded on the Singapore exchange. Note that the internationalization of financial markets is also leading the way to a more integrated world of economy in which flows of goods and technology between countries are more commonplace. Function of financial intermediaries, and we are going to focus on indirect finance. The process of indirect finance using financial intermediaries, called financial intermediation, and is the primary route for moving funds from lenders to borrowers. Financial intermediaries are a far more important source of financing for corporations than securities markets are. Now, why are financial intermediaries and indirect finance so important in financial markets? To answer this question, we need to understand the role of transaction costs, risk sharing, and information problems in financial markets. Transaction costs. Transaction costs, which are the time and money spent in carrying out financial transactions, are a major problem for people who have excess funds to lend. Also, financial intermediaries can substantially reduce transaction costs because they have developed expertise in lowering them and because the large size allowed them to take advantage of economies of scale, which is the reduction in transaction costs per pound of transactions at the size or the scale of transactions increases. In addition, a financial intermediary's low transaction costs mean that it can provide its customers with liquidity services. services that make it easier for customers to conduct transactions. Risk sharing. Another benefit made possible by the low transaction costs of financial institutions is that they can help reduce the exposure of investors to risk, that is, uncertainty about the returns investors will earn on assets. Also, financial intermediaries do this through the process known as risk sharing. They create and sell assets with risk characteristics that people are comfortable with and the intermediaries then use the funds they acquire by selling these assets to purchase other assets that may have far more risk. Financial intermediaries also promote risk sharing by helping individuals to diversify and by lower the amount of risk to which they are exposed. Diversification entails investing in correction or also called portfolio of assets whose returns don't always move together with the result that overall risk is lower than for individual assets. 
Asymmetric information, adverse selection, and the moral hazard. To explain the concept of asymmetric information in financial markets, look at one party often doesn't know enough about the other party to make accurate decisions. For example, a borrower who takes out a loan usually has better information about the potential returns and risks associated with the investment projects for which the funds are earmarked than the lender does. Now, lack, lack of information creates problems in the financial system both before and after the transaction is entered into. Adverse selection is the problem created by asymmetric information before the transaction occurs. Adverse selection in financial markets occurs when the potential borrowers who are the most likely to produce undesirable or adverse outcome, which are called the bad credit risks, are the ones who most actively seek out a loan and are thus most likely to be selected. Because adverse selection makes it more likely that loans might be made to bad credit risks, lenders may decide not to make any loans even enough good credit risks exist in the marketplace. Moral hazard is the problem created by asymmetric information after the transaction occurs. Moral hazard in financial markets is the risk hazard that the borrower might engage in activities that are undesirable or immoral from the lender's point of view because they make it less likely that the loan will be paid back because moral hazard lowers the probability that the loan will be repaid lenders may decide that they would rather not make a loan successful financial intermediaries have higher earnings on their investments because they are better equipped than individuals to screen out bad credit risks from good ones, thereby reducing the losses due to adverse selection. In addition, financial intermediaries have high earnings because they develop expertise in monitoring the parties they lend to, thus reducing the losses due to moral hazard. Note that, as we have seen, financial intermediaries play an important role in the economy because they provide liquidity services, promote risk sharing, and solve information problems, thereby allowing small savers and borrowers to benefit from the existence of financial markets. Types of financial intermediaries Financial intermediaries fall into three categories. First, depository institutions. Depository are financial intermediaries that accept deposits from individuals and institutions and make loans. These institutions include commercial banks and the so-called thrift institutions which are savings and loan associations, mutual savings banks, and the credit unions. Second, contractual savings institutions. Contractual savings institutions such as insurance companies and the pension funds are financial intermediaries that acquire funds at periodic intervals on a contractual basis. Third, investment intermediaries. This category of financial intermediaries includes finance companies, mutual funds, money market mutual funds, 
and investment banks. Regulation of the financial system. The government regulates financial markets and financial intermediaries for two main reasons. First, to increase the information available to investors. Second, to ensure the soundness of the financial system. Regulations include requiring disclosure of information to the public and restrictions on who can set up a financial intermediary. Also, restrictions on the assets financial intermediaries can hold and the provision of deposit insurance and limits on competition and restrictions on interest rates.